Desires are reduced to a hunger for flesh. Even a wilderness can smell like paradise. Because what some call dates, I call hunting for prey. I even had damsels flashing me with their voluptuous compromises, fulfilling my national geographic fantasies. I always wanted a girl gone wild. So what on earth would cause this ravishing beauty to lavishly love an atrocious animal? Didn't she ever hear that once God gives a man his rib, he pours that master's peace on her rightful throne, but give a rib to a dog and all he recognizes is a bone. So like a bone. I desired to bury her worth in the backyard of my mind, but I couldn't shake those thoughts. They, they plagued my conscience like fleas. I was in heat. See, she was supposed to be like every other girl, just a fresh piece of meat. Because I never wanted any chemistry, but I did treat relationships like a lab, and that required a rat. How else would I experiment? A mad scientist only concerned about studying what was in her genes, and I guess that made me feel tough. Because I learned to outwardly translate the beauty. I learned to outwardly translate the bitterness I was inwardly considering. After being emotionally battled until I was numb, I got used to having the feelings and seeing she was already aware of the brokenness of my heart. In fact, I could have sworn I saw her collecting the bloody fragments from under my ex's heels, and I'm sure they never knew how much those red bottles cost me, but it's like she could see past my past and past the ugliness and, and past this wolves apparel that I used to cover it. They say love is blind, but a lie. You don't know her optometry. She gave me hope. She gave me hope when she spoke with the sureness of a prophet. It's like it rubbed off on me because I began to see my future standing right in front of me. But we were polar opposites. I had to consider there must have been something, something untamable, a, a transformational force that drew us like, like the sketches of an architect drew us like, like the pool of affectionate madness drew us like, like the pistols of dueling cowboys and our souls were two bullets that collided like asteroids that weren't paying close enough attention to where they were going in at last. Perhaps... Due to the impact, the spell was broken. And it happened just like a movie, uh, a Disney movie. Because when Disney landed, it became the most magical place on earth. Okay. And wedding bell was beyond a sound. It was my dream becoming a reality. But now I realize my story was just a low budget remake of the original. See, once upon a time, before we met him, we were beast, cursed with a curse that left us inclined to the wickedness of our hearts. Our forms were, were downgraded from glorious to sinful, and we were doomed. Unless, of course, in the course of this course, course, the creator could concoct a concoction to cure us. Uh -huh. Crack, crack these caterpillar cocoons, these carnal coffins caging our consciences. He communicates with corpses and calls them to consciousness with the confident competence to cause this curse to be canceled. And so, an untamable, transformational force called grace introduced perfection to disaster. Though we were unworthy to cross his path, through the cross his path, heathens have made contact with matchless beauty. His mercy was laid so heavily upon us, it suffocated the groanings of our guilt and the cries of our judgment. He reached past the depths of death, through the chambers of darkness, and pulled us out of the lost and found. We were lost and found by he whose presence makes wimps of our savage facades with a passion so intimidating. He just loves and loves the hell out of us. Because he understood that once the purest of blood was spilled, it would never be in vain. So no matter who finds Christ, the truest love, it will never be the same again. For beauty himself tells our souls we'll live happily ever after. But to the beast we call sin, he will say, the end. So here's the thing. The Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a what? Good thing. A man who finds a wife finds a what? Good thing. If you're a good thing, say ow. Ow. So here's the thing.
If a man has to find a wife, that means a man has to be intentional about the search. I know we in college and none of us trying to get married right now, but look, it's in your future. So let this be a seed that you take in right now. Raise your hand if you're a man. Raise your hand if you're a boy. Raise your hand if you're a man. Okay, if you are a man, we'll do Hey, um, my homeboy said he liked you. <laughs> we don't even do none of that. Like, why are you playing with girls if you have no long-term intentions with them? And besides that, I'm trying to really look at that. I believe perfect purpose. If I'm going to date you, it's... It's, it's for me to learn about you so I can prepare and I can make provision to be able to marry you. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to, you know, waste your resources. If I'm interested, then I'm going to make, make, it, make it known. So here's the thing. Here's one tip for you ladies. Men, most men are pretty, you know, are pretty good with at least... If you finally get it, you know, get in contact with them, if they really are serious about you, you're going to know. I'm not saying that they're going to be perfect once you get in contact with them, but if they're serious about you, at least you're going to know. So that question like, but is he really, really serious? Because like, I ain't heard from him in like 17 weeks. And it's like, but, but the first time I seen him, it was like a sparkle in his eye. He was going back and forth for like two days straight, and I'm just like, God, what do you want from me? Like, don't, it's not, it's not happening. If he's interested, you'll know. So, so guys, it's time to take take up your mantle and be a man. If you're interested in the woman, you know, take the necessary provision, get the counseling, get the premarital counseling, whatever is necessary. Build yourself up, build your credit, get your degree, and marry the girl. Amen. Amen. Marry the girl. Amen. All right. Women, if you are going to be found, then that insinuates, insinuates a search has to take place. If a search has to take place, that means you must be what? Somebody said it. Somebody said it? Hidden or hiding. My question to you is, are you hiding? And if you're hiding, are you hiding in the right place? Because I believe that that scripture is, is making a statement and a declaration that if you're going to be found by the right one, then you should be hidden in God. And what does that even look like? Because in the Instagram era, it's about show me. And so the women are tempted to show a man that they love them, to show a man that they should be with them. That is not your job. God shows a man who he should be with. It's not your job to expose yourself, present yourself, to give him what you think he wants, to be loyal like a wife, and give him things that only wifeys can give, but don't have a ring to represent what you have going on, friends, and with benefits and privileges. Nah, it's not biblical. And what happens when you're not hidden? Because you still will be met by some people. But what happens? See, if you're hidden, then you're out of the, the domain or field or the field. And if you're out the field and you're, you're hidden in God and doing what God's called you, called you to do and you're locked in your purpose, then the only people that are in the field are stumbling in your life. That includes who he wants you to be with and when. That means you don't have to validate yourself by who's filling you right now. Do your work. Get your degree. If God presents himself, presents this guy while you're in school, cool. If it's 10 years from after that, cool. Because which, if you rush, if you try to rush it and do it your way, all you're going to end up with is your will. And even Jesus had to say, you know what, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I wish, you know, I'm about to, I got one more piece, but I wish that I was at a place that there were some Nigerians. <laughs> Nigerian. Uh, what I love about the Nigerian culture is, you know, you know, you, they can have a worship, they can have a praise, but ain't nobody pray like a Nigerian. Yes. 
Ain't nobody crazy. Like, I know we got some Nigerians on the corner. Amen! That's what I'm talking about. And no, nobody prays like a Nigerian because when a Nigerian prays, it's violent. It's always warfare. And we're creative. I love how we pray because it's so creative and angry at the same time. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, we like to, we like to just call down elements like thunder, fire, blood, bombs. I love it. Like, and it always starts off with the same old words. It's not, it's not these words that ain't Nigerian. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, we go straight into it. We don't even worship God in the beginning. Step out of the way, I'm like, you I'm like, we gonna skip the worship and the majesty and the good, good father. We're not even gonna we go straight to Satan. Okay, let him do it. And then they just start, they just start blazing demons. And they find, you know, everything is spiritual. So I mean, like, don't have no cats around no Nigeria. I spent many a days rebuking cats in my neighborhood because the way I grew who, who sent you? 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 So what I, what I learned, and even from my own relationship, I, I, I prayed this prayer, I prayed, I said, God, if this woman is not for me, take her out of my life. I, that was the first thing, I didn't say it was it's not for me. I just said, Lord, I'm feeling this girl. Take her out of my life because I feel like if this is not your will, I'm about to make it mine because I like her. I'm feeling her. You know, and don't act like it's strange. Like, some of y'all just want, let's just see how it work out. Now, you don't even know what can happen. So that's, that's how I feel. Like, let's just see what happens. Like, you don't know what the plan can be. And so, I prayed that prayer. Some of you guys might need to pray some Nigerian prayers for your own life. For your Instagram. For your own, just as you move, because... What's happening is, it's not that, you know, nobody's talking to you. It's just the wrong people be talking to you, right? Go ahead and pray that the Lord just shield you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am tired. <laughs> Father, everything loses up trying to go my way. If he's riding bike, both these tires in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, if he's driving car, confuse the GPS right now. spiritualized yeah I mean I mean we even had we were shooting uh, heavenly machine guns in our church I mean it, it, it got real it's father send down the heavenly machine gun from heaven automatic weapon wherever you are seeking of my destiny Because I was so entrenched in this understanding that you know it's spiritual, I realized that there is a heavy importance in spiritual warfare. We're in spiritual warfare, right? I'm about to get out of here. That's where this peace comes from. In America, we forget how deeply we're involved in spiritual warfare because we're so consumed. But there is a war for your soul going on right now, and it's raging. And that's where this peace comes from. It's the last peace. Let me get out your way. Tell the person next to you. Shh.
do man. From the beginning of time, I fought against your innocence. So the fact that you keep falling into the same sin that you've been trying to avoid is no coincidence I've assigned demons. To rigorously study each and every one of you since birth so we know what your weakness is. Our strength is made perfect in your weaknesses now. Before I go any further, I want you to understand that I hate you. But the main purpose of me having this conversation is to show you how much I appreciate you, so thank you. Because your generation has generated so much hope for me, it's pathetic, yet impressive, so please continue with your carelessness. So you don't even have to worship me because I'm the only being that you can make your God without even being aware of it, so by default. If you're not in him, it's not even a contest. See, when you don't serve the God that's right, I'm the only God that's left. Therefore, there's no need to discriminate. I've even come to eliminate him. He's, her, she's kisses from me are sweeter than pieces of chocolate droplets. So, Adam, Eve, take and eat. Your disobedience is so sexy to me. I have a fetish for hypocrites the way you go from right to wrong, from light to dark. That turns me on like a switch because you switch when you walk. So justify him and justify sins you're already condemned and allow me to cause you to pass the rock of your salvation which brings deliverance to your soul. Now you can never blame me. See I just gave you an assist. You took yourself to the hole every day. I replicate a reversed Halloween. But my potential costumes are made of flesh and blood with a spirit that is breathed and a will that is free. I see billions of costumes now. Hmm. Who should I be? How about the perfect guy you'd like to meet? Kind of rough for, <laughs> kind of sweet with a pair of hurricane eyes that'll shatter the levees of your heart and sweep you off your feet, but instead of a ring, I'll just hang you a leash and treat you like the female dogs that you are to me, or I can come in a miniskirt with heels, cause I know you like disguise, but sometimes that is my disguise. I'm a terrorist of the eye, the way I hijack your mind, make you blind to what's right, I'd have you so enticed that you might just cheat on your wife, or better yet, die for me. See, when you put truth under this thing, you always lie with me. No lie. In the end, nobody wins. That's why we end up with our souls tied. See, I have used mankind to become the greatest diversion that mankind has ever seen. See, I never look like the problem when I make the problem look like human beings. And if sisters have strife with sisters and brothers could fight their brothers, I have a victory because you end up with nations of wounded families but an unscarred enemy. And it tickles me because I patented segregation. So the separation of the brethren is just an extension of that invention. So no matter how many children are born into God's kingdom, I make sure they all see sections. Sometimes things are not always as bad as they seem. I want you to pretend that hell is like a, a beautiful dream, like, like a blind date with darkness because love won't be seen, but you will be constantly embraced by undying flames until excruciating pain will seem like relief. But wait, oh wait, there's been a glitch in my plans that some of you may call great. Because despite my flowery displays of affection, my, my showering with bouquets of temptation, how come when one rose, everything changed? It was that Christ. That Christ. Over 2,000 years ago, I manipulated and perverted men to capture that innocent lamb, to torture and murder him because I knew that once the only hope of humanity was dead, I would wear upon my head the glory of omnipotence as my crown. For I, ruler of darkness, prince of the air, could only rise when the sun was down. But he, he, he flipped the script on me. The very 
everything I was trying to use to bind you forever, he turned around and used it to set you free. It's like they MC hammered those nails in his wrist. I'm disgusted because the blood that covers believers is too legit. So when you commit your spirit scream, can't touch this. He, he is a reckless romantic. He would put his entire kingdom on hold to hold you. Would an impeccable God be so desperate to make a flawed and broken creature whole? You don't even have the slightest clue how much he adores you. That's why I'm deceiving men, distracting them from seeing him, yes. I'm always planning to bring calamity so I can magic trick you into thinking that he vanished, but no matter what happens, he always finds a way to breathe a peace upon you that passes my understanding, of course, your Lord has already conquered me. Why do you think these weapons I formed against you are not prospering? I am dead. Meat. That's why I have been with you. You that believe and you know he's crushing my head, but I barely bruise his feet so day and night. I, I approach his throne with accusations of you, but despite my efforts, he never sees you as trash. But instead, as a treasure, he has made his grace so environmentally friendly. The way he embraces humans with his arms shaped like blue bins is beyond stupid. It's unusual. Despite how filthy and damaged you are, he still desires to recycle and renew you to use you again his heart his heart is like an internet address bar he's constantly conducting worldwide searches for lives that will allow him to clear their history and give them new sights but they are spiritually blind but I've had enough because it's completely irrational it just doesn't make sense why he loves you and you and all of you, so much. Why? Does he long for your arrival like a child does? December 25th, you tread upon his mercy with attitudes like Scrooge, but he sits and lets it pass, and yet is willing to take you back like the ghost of Christmas past. It's foolish, but I'm running out of time. This clock is like a bomb. It's tick, tick, tick away and those of you that don't watch it will watch it blow up in their face now brisk are the movement of my feet I don't play research the synonym of insomnia and replace it with my name I'm awake and I work and I work and I go with no breaks and I go with no breaks plus I'm drunk with road rage and the only thing that stands in my way is this dead end route called hell so let's crash and burn together forever, please. Please, please. I beg you, don't surrender to him. Though he said I have life, if you spell devil backwards, at least you have lived. I will give you the world in exchange for your soul. So please, satisfy my soul need if the sky were the limit for your souls I would reach. But thank your God that my sky has a ceiling called the soles of your feet. testimony in this. Today we did an experiment where we connected with someone to show love. But I want you to know that if it's true that the enemy has plotted against your existence ever since you came to existence, I mean he strategized to kill you. He strategized to throw you into a spiral of depression through heartbreak and abuse, through neglect or whatever the case may be. If the enemy has plotted against you, he's also plotted against a moment like this, 
And here's the testimony of that. If you mean to tell me that the enemy is racing, not slumbering about it, to attack, to steal, to kill, to destroy me, yet I'm in this place, my heart is open to a move of God. My spirit's ready to move for God. That means one thing. It means that there is a power that has been after you that supersedes the plans of the enemy in your life. And here's the thing. We're all different people. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different testimonies. But there's one thing that we have in common. It's a three-word testimony, and it's this. We're still here. Nobody said nothing about it. Nobody said amen. Nobody said glory be to God. Amen. We're still here means this. We're still here means that the God that is working on behalf of your life has been working yeah. contrary to the plans of the enemy. He's been victorious in your life. Some, of some people feel defeated because of the things that they've gone through, even recently feel so defeated, but I want you to know because you're here, it means that God's design is superseding, is victorious over the plans of the enemy in your life. Now my question to you, now that we're still here, is what are you going to do about it? Because guess what? God has fought on your behalf to get you moments like this before, yet we're back here with another opportunity for a similar moment. What are you going to do this time? When two people get married, the reverend tells them, you know, he doesn't say, you know what, uh, say I feel, say I want. He says, say I what? Do. I do means I make a decision. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to make a decision because he's already made, made a decision on behalf of you. Do you know that love is not an emotion? Love is a decision. And that's what you're here for. You're here to either affirm the decision or to make the decision. Do you know that I got married 10 years ago? But every morning that I wake up, I have to make a decision to be married to my wife. Oh, y'all like, what? Yeah. Just because you got a job don't mean that you go to work every day. Every day you wake up, you're making a decision saying, I married my wife today and I'm going to act like it. God set you free seven years ago, but when you affirm it in the morning, you're saying, God, I know you set me free seven years ago. Today, I'm going to act like it. And I do that every day. Yes, I made you Lord of my life in 2014. Today, I make you Lord of my life April 28, 2018. And tomorrow, yeah, yesterday I made you Lord of my life. It's not that the, 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 the agreement failed, but you're affirming it. And because you're affirming it, that's faith. I'm going to walk out the decision. I'm going to live out the decision that's already been made. I'm going to live out that love. Just because I love my wife doesn't mean that I act like I love my wife every time. I have to make a decision to love her. Moment to moment, day by day. Anybody know the word exclusivity? Anybody know what that means? What does that mean? It's just it's specific to whatever you want it to be to. It's right, it's, it's, it's encapsulated, it's enclosed, meaning whoever's in it, that's, it's only between them, right? right. You know, and th these days, Men don't like a lot of exclusivity. They want an open relationship. You know, can we have a date, open dating relationship? God don't play that. He says, if you're going to be in a relationship with me, it has to be an exclusive one. And it can't be you and you. And it can't be you and your job. And it can't be you and your desires. And it can't be you and your lust. And it can't be you and your flesh. And it can't be you and your the boo. It has to be.